and welcome to the Charles River Conservancy Parkland Show. My name is Renata von Charner. I'm the founder and president of the Charles River Conservancy. And as you can see here, we're going to talk about inline skating. It was inline skating actually that was made me fall in love with the river the first time um, because I thought this is the perfect place to do inline skating. So I bought inline skates, bought inline skates for my children, I took lessons and um, it's a wonderful sport. And today we have the expert, John Wang. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. So um, inline skating, in my view, is the perfect sport for the Charles River Parklands. And so I thought we bring in the expert who teaches inline skating. He's a Cambridge resident, a long time Cambridge resident and um, he can teach you of how to master this wonderful sport that will give you a lot of joy along the Charles River. And as you know, we always start with this image and we will use that image again because all along that river, the Cambridge side, on the Boston side, on the Newton side, Watertown, it all along is the perfect place to go inline skating. But let's go um, to the skate park first because um, we built the skate park, um, it was opened a year ago because um, we saw that as a place for skateboarders, for BMX bikers and inline skaters. Well this is obviously the, the, the more um, well-known use of the park and that was an opening day. Andy McDonald who is it was a handstand, but he has the skateboard on his hand. But this bowl, I have seen this bowl actually used by inline skaters just, yeah, just the other day. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So um, tell us a little bit of about inline skating. How did you get involved? Um, how did inline skating, how did that develop? Well, uh, personally, I started inline skating seriously uh, about 11 years ago, 2005. So you were, you were in primary school by then? <laughs> <laughs> How old were you then? I'm sorry to ask uh, you. I you was, were young? No, no, no? Not, not at all. I was uh, in my later 30s, so wow, uh, wow. that pretty much you, gives away so my So inline age. skating makes you age well too, so that's great. <laughs> it is very youthful, yeah, yeah absolutely. Very youthful. kept me great. young. Uh, Wonderful. And uh, it really, uh, I think, uh, it, it all happened because I actually took an instruction with uh, an instructor mm -hmm. and he corrected uh, something really fundamental and that made all the difference. It went from something that I just did occasionally to something that I just wanted to do every day after, uh, you know, I yeah. sort of realized. Yeah. Uh, well, that was the I'm first thing people recommended when I said, I want to take up inline skating. They said, take lessons, because then I got my hand guards and I got my elbow guards and my knee guards. And they said, now you can just behave as if you were on ice, just glide on the pavement as if, if it was ice. And it probably helps to be an, an, a skater to be an inline skater. Correct. Uh, I would say that uh, the overlap in skills between inline skating and ice skating is almost 100%. Mm -hmm. If you can do you know, particular skills in one, you can absolutely do them in, in the other. There's you know, just a little difference in the fact that the edging and the, the blade is different, but the uh, actual skill is the same. Yeah, yeah. And I, I know you, you tried to educate me about the um, roller blades, which now, it, the, the proper word now, as you say, is quad skates. Uh, correct. So, so that's the old <laughs> traditional um, roller derby. Right, right. So shoe. you have, exactly, you have two types of skates. Uh, they both have four wheels, but if you have uh, the four wheels next to each other, sort of like a car, yeah. then those are called quad skates or roller skates. And if the four wheels are in line, right behind one another, then they're called inline skates. And that's what you teach, that, that's your sport. Right. Yeah. So let's look at, um, let's look at, the, at, at the skate park. Is that you or is that somebody else at the skate park doing it? Uh, that's a skater, uh, his name is uh, Josh Brennan. Uh -huh. he's, he's a terrific aggressive skater and he's doing uh, a unity grind down one of the handrails. A unity grind, what unity does that grind. mean? 
it's a, it's a type of uh, posture you you hold while you're grinding down. You sort of you have your legs crossed and you're oh. grinding on the middle part of your skate called the H block. So it's, it's it a, looks very elegant. It's really like it it's a, like a form of dancing. It is. It's it's and um, and here that's in the that's in the deep bowl. It, it is. Yeah. Uh, he's, uh, his name is uh, Gabe Holm. He's another phenomenal, long-time aggressive skater. He mm. actually uh, owns a skate shop in Brookline called oh. Thorough. Called and, what? Uh, Thorough Skate Thorough. Shop. T -H -U -R -O. And he sells he sells inline skates. Yes, I. I, I'm just a very happy customer. I can wholeheartedly recommend this uh, shop. So he knows what he's talking about. He does. Right? So he's he's doing a a, a fish brain stall, and uh, uh, later on, while we were uh, photographing, he went in and did the whole D part of it. Yeah, film. yeah. Uh, it's such a very different movement than if you are with a BMX bike or you on a skateboard. It it's different different approach. It is. I mean, the main difference is you have these skates, they're strapped on your feet, they don't come off. So uh, you're yeah, either always okay. grinding or rolling. There's no, say, compared to skateboard where you might jump off if you yeah. feel you're off balance. There's no jumping off. It's, yeah, you're always in your skates. Well, that, it, that comforts me because I never quite understand how you can handle the moves and then the board is, is independent. So I think that's nice to know. Um, that the, the wheels stick to your legs. That's wonderful. <laughs> That's a wonderful picture. It's so elegant. Right. Yeah, on the uh, big ball. He did. Yeah. This Josh again. Yeah. So um, now let's go to um, the parklands because the parklands are very well suited for um, for inline skating. Except I have a picture here. I photographed that. That was before <laughs> it was resurfaced. DCR, the Department of Conservation and Recreation, who owns the parkland, they have since, since resurfaced that because it's very tricky um, to navigate to navigate that. <laughs> so that's not me, but it could have been me struggling. <laughs> so um, I think the best way to do to do to start is to go to maybe Memorial Drive, closed on Sunday. This is the perfect spot. And you might have seen people there with cones. And that's when I first met you on Memorial Drive. Right. So tell me what's happening here on Memorial Drive. Well, uh, this, this photo is from our uh, Cambridge Skate Fest event, uh, annual event that we started in 2015. And uh, uh, one reason we started it was because they resurfaced, repaved the mm. uh, Western half of the closed section of Memorial Drive, so it's actually really smooth. Yeah, that makes a big difference. A huge oh, difference. Yes. So uh, in in this particular picture, this is again Josh Brennan. He was uh, in the competition, and it looks like he's uh, jumping into. Um, I would say that's either an alley oop torque sole. It looks like. So every move has a name, just like in, in skateboarding. Every yes. every move it has a name here. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And, and here, this is this a ramp? Is, is, is he in the air there? Yes. This yeah. Is, this is a launch ramp. So it's a curved ramp. Um, and uh, this is Matt Ragone doing a 360, a standard oh. 360 jump. Here we go. Look at that. And, that. Right. This this one. This is a more advanced jump. And this is. Um, Andy Leiterman doing a, a, a spinning jump called the Misty Flip. It's, it's definitely an advanced jump where you sort of spin sideways and then also do a 90 degree spin vertically. So you end up turning around sideways and then landing going backwards. Yeah. And you, you how do you call, the, I mean, it, that's very different from just kind of doing tourism or working with cones. How do you call that style? So this is, I would say this is all part of aggressive skating, aggressive, aggressive. inline skating. Is yes. the word extreme used in, in inline skating too? It is. Uh, you know, certainly aggressive skating uh, can get quite extreme. Uh, so it's used, I don't think it's, you know, necessarily specific to inline skating yeah, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd like you to tell me a little bit about um, the sport of inline skating. I know it was extremely popular um, 
uh, when I I think when I picked it up, and and now. It, it has become less popular, so we need to work on it because it's the perfect sport for, <laughs> right. the, for the parklands. It, it, uh, it, uh, I would say uh, Rollerblade, the company, uh, essentially sort of really started it back in the early 80s, around the early to mid 80s, that's when it really started taking off. And by mid 90s was uh, the, when the it, was, it was pretty much the peak of popularity. Around 97, uh, there were approximately 26 million Americans yeah. participating in it. Uh, but unfortunately, according to the most recent survey, uh, only about 6 million or so Americans have tried it uh, in 2015, and out of them, only about 1.7 million do, do so regularly. regularly. Yes. So you have a lot of teaching to do. Uh, <laughs> you, have, you have a lot of people to, to, to teach that um, when I look at that equipment, that looks much more sophisticated than what I had with big wheels, pneumatic wheels. So that might make it much easier and much safer to go over bumps, I imagine. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, I think, you know, it is uh, from both anecdotal evidence and some of the surveys, it does look like it's slowly making a comeback. The equipment is so much better, mm. than the, ironically, so much better than it was in the 90s. Yeah, and yeah. as you say, uh, you can get skates with really you know, big wheels, for instance, something like this. Yeah. Um, you can get skates where you can put your shoes. So you don't, you don't, you, you like with ski boots often, it's painful. I remember my um, inline skates, like snow boots, they hurt. So here you can just wear your sneakers and then you go in. So you have the high tech without the high pain. <laughs> right, I, I would like say that. exactly. This is probably one of my most comfortable skates yeah. because you're just wearing uh, what look like normal, you know, flat yeah. bottom skate sneakers. Yeah. And then uh, they just go into what looks like snowboard binding essentially. Yeah. So um, don't, don't just go out there, make sure you take a lesson first and wear your gear. You didn't bring the gear, there's not enough space, but it makes a huge difference if you have, have the hand guards because then you can glide. Absolutely, and, yeah. right. Just on that point, I would say, uh, I think that, you know, just as in skates, there's a much bigger variety of protective gear these days as well, just because there are so many more sports yeah. and everyone wants to be more protected. So it, you don't just have to wear maybe the typical you know, hard cap exterior pads that you might often see on a standard inline skate uh, picture. There are many options, for instance, that are very slim. They go under your clothing. They're very comfortable. You could just wear it also, all day. Also, nobody knows you're wearing no one, it. <laughs> no one even knows that you're wearing. So if people are, for instance, yeah. image conscious, which is uh, understandable. Understandable, Absolutely. exactly. Uh, exactly. You have many options. Yeah, yeah. So let's go back to some of these um, tricks. But, we have more tricks here, wonderful more tricks. And then I would like to get to, oh, I want to, you to talk about photography, which is very much part of it, um, as it is with skateboarding, to, to take pictures of each other is very important. It is, and uh, I mean, there, this cannot be a coincidence. Uh, it's amazing, overwhelmingly, many of the skaters I've met, and myself included, there is, in, in addition to the skating passion that they have, they also seem to have a lot of passion for artistic endeavors, yeah. like, yeah. Uh, you know, filmmaking yeah. and design. It's also nice to capture your victories. Absolutely. Because you can tell people, oh, I did this flip and that flap. Uh, but then, but if you can show them, it, if it has, it's, it's easier to, to be believed. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. And then part of that competition um, was working with kids. So tell us, tell us what's happening here. Uh, that was part of the Cambridge Skate Fest. Well, uh, this is a uh, 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 youth competitor. Her name is Jana, and she's participating in the uh, freestyle slalom contest here. Yeah. And uh, I mean, uh, absolutely. I mean, probably for me, my greatest uh, gratification comes from seeing kids come into mm. the sport. And um, in, in the case of freestyle slalom, there are a lot of very highly technical skills and tricks involved. But 
Uh, it's pretty low risk, so yeah. there's a lot. I mean, it's really, really fun. It's very. Uh, it, there's a lot of fitness involved as mm -hmm. well, but um, uh, it doesn't. You know, it does. It's not that dangerous at all. Yeah, yeah. And, and how old are the youngest kids that participate or that you work with? Well, uh, I would say generally my experience has been around starting around five years of age is a good age. To, to start. Uh, prior to that, you really can't give any instruction. I would, I just tell for parents who call me or contact me before that age, I just say, I, I recommend a certain pair of skates that they can get and just put them on your child, put on the protective gear and just let them try to walk in them. That's really the best way uh, to and introduce it. And just have them it. enjoy it. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is great. And here we have some more pictures and uh, it takes an enormous amount of concentration. You can uh, watch them of how they go around. They can go around those cones very fast. Right, that's a skater, his name is Sonic, and he's uh, doing a trick called the crazy on the cones. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's one of my favorite tricks. Uh, it sort of makes, makes you look like you're sort of always tipping one way or the other. Yeah. Your legs look you know, like rubber. It's, it's a good trick. Yeah. And is it, would you say it also helps with ice skating? It's, it's a training for ice skating? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I would say the initial motivation for the invention of inline skating, uh, which happened way before rollerblade, in fact, was all about uh, some way to train off season. Off season, Right. Yeah. For all the ice related sports, whether yeah. it was hockey or yeah. figure ice skating. Yeah. I, I skating. remember along the river you sometimes see people on very long, it's like a board with wheels under it and they have poles. So I, I would think they're, they're right. training for inline that's for cross country skiing. Yes, that's related to, uh, right. Yeah. They, they put wheels on what look like short cross country skis for. Yeah for that type of training as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, I think which is a great. And then here we have this this young woman looks very elegant in her in her yellow tights. It's almost like ballet, I remember her. She was just beautiful in, in her. Right, no, she was really good. She's doing a toe-to snake. That's another uh, slalom trick. Yeah, yeah. And so, so now tell us about your, your teaching. You teach individuals, you teach camps. Yes, uh, uh, usually individuals uh, or family or semi-private lessons, typically if uh, multiple people want to take lessons together. I've uh, done uh, group lessons, probably more so in the past. I'm a father of a three-year-old, so the past couple of years <laughs> I've been more tied up with yeah. my parental duties, yeah. but uh, I definitely want to get back into uh, offering more group lessons. Mm. Uh, I also do uh, sort of social skates, just um, uh, just organize skates, sort of like the competition where yeah. I try to just get more people out, uh, offer more social forum uh, for people to. Yeah, I have some. I have some um, some pictures here of um, yeah, more kids. And I and um, I will I will show some thing because I um, on the street I live I live near the Charles. Often I see, I see whole groups going down, and they're having a lot of fun um, because the the leader the leader knows where their smooth surface is. So sure. um, that really helps to know um, where to go, and um, and then you 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 go and and do basically do you exercise and have fun at the same time? Right. The thing about, I mean, uh, skating, I think, is fun for so many reasons. But uh, one of the key reasons in my mind is that you feel like you're in your normal shoes. You feel like a pedestrian, yet you can go mm. almost as easily as being on a bicycle. So it really lends itself to exploring, to, to going down streets that you may not go down on any other sort of form of transportation. Yeah, and yeah. That really makes uh, yeah. makes a lot of fun. I skipped over that very quickly. If that's you there, John, Mr. <laughs> you speak, you're giving out awards there, is that correct? I'm announcing, yes, the, yeah. the winners and uh, the kids really, uh, oh, really enjoyed Oh gosh, they, they're really happy there. <laughs> the they got ceremony. medals and it's what a great skill to have. 
And um, so I'm, I'm delighted you're doing that. So we have, um, this is um, uh, Urban Urban Inline is your... That's is, my website. That's your yes. website. And, um, and Jump Boy at Urban Inline, so that's your email address. So how, that's how people can get in touch with you and on your on your website. Sure. It describes how to arrange a lesson yes. and and you would I know you often kind of meet I know some of the areas you meet is near Harvard Square and then you go down to the river, I imagine. I do. I, I mean I think we're really fortunate here in Cambridge yeah. with all of the public park facility, uh, certainly the Charles River and mm -hmm. all the uh, facilities. Uh, so there are really plenty of places that you can skate that are flat and smooth uh, that you can uh, do lessons yeah and so um, it's it's uh, it's really uh, really easy yeah well we, we have um, of course we have Memorial Drive was closed on Sunday and there's a Cambridge City Councilor Jan Devereaux who is now working on extending that Sunday closer so it will be closed all year. Wow. Because inline skating is a great sport. You can do it bundled up. <laughs> Absolutely. And you can definitely hide all your pads underneath heavy, heavy gear. You can. It's and a great sport in the winter. Uh, you can. And even and with a skate like this, just as an example, yeah, you can even skate wheels. when it's wet or even with a little bit of snow on the ground. Yeah. 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 So, um, I also have some pictures that I actually got from the Inline Club of Boston and they have on, on Sundays, uh, they go all across the city. So you see they have their Red Cross person and the leader. That's right, Skate Patrol. Yeah, yes. the Skate Patrol. And, um, and they go through the city. And I remember I was once in Paris and Friday night at midnight I heard I heard a noise and I opened my wheel note, it was on the Rue de Rivoli and there were hundreds, maybe thousands, <laughs> thousands. of inline yes. skaters. What a, and I wish, oh, I wish I could just join them. And so I think we need to make sure that the city of Cambridge and Boston, they keep their potholes under control <laughs> or people have good skates so that we could have something like that. That was just wonderful. I agree. Um, but in the meantime, we can, you know, people, do these tours and then they um, stop for sightseeing. This is a wonderful way to use um, inline skates and you don't have to worry about about where to park them. You know, you it, just have them there. That Exactly. Yeah. I, I would say that uh, that is another very practical aspect of inline skates. Yeah. They don't take up much room. They're no. very easy to carry. And now that you have inline skates where you can s have a sneaker go in and out. It's Slip very in easy. And out. That's wonderful. Absolutely. They don't take much room yeah. in your home. Uh, you can travel yeah. uh, with them. Well, we only have a few minutes left, so I wanted to point out some areas which are great for inline skating. The DCR, as part of this historic parkway initiative, is um, building new separated paths in front of MIT um, between the BU Bridge and the and the Longfellow Bridge, so all along here are brand new bike paths which are very smooth, lend themselves, so they're separated from the running path and the walking path. But really all along, all along the parkland, all along the bike path um, will be, is a great place to no, do that, inline skate. Absolutely. The whole loop from the Science Museum all the way to the end of Greeno Boulevard on the west side. Uh, it's you know it's a lot of distance. It's terrific, and much of that is very smooth. Yeah, so if, yeah, uh, yeah. If they finish yeah. paving, it will be terrific. Great. Absolutely. So we have to uh, make sure that inline skating, um, you know, continues to be a great sport. I think it's a very <laughs> it's a healthy sport, and it's perfect to do along the parklands. So John, I want to thank you for working with kids, introducing that sport to kids and teaching people of how to enjoy it. Thank you, thank you, Renata. And um, so um, I will go back um, to make sure you um, caught um, the information how to contact John to get a lesson or to find out more about inline skating. Um, that's his website. And, um, and so I hope to see you on the parklands and 
um, and thank you very much and keep keep doing that sport and make sure your three-year-old um, <laughs> continues that and, and gets all his friends involved thank you thank you very much